In this video, I will provide you with a simple formula that is used by a variety of different carpenters. However, I have to say I've never used this one myself to calculate the length of a floor joist. And it's quite simple. And in this video, I went ahead and did my own test. And even though it might not provide you with a smaller lumber size, it will definitely provide you with something that will work. And to do it, you're simply taking half of the span and then adding the number two to it to get the height of the joist. So it's quite simple. Let me go ahead and walk you through this one here where we have a 10 foot span and you will also need to round your number off to the nearest foot. I will provide you with an example of that towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead and divide 10 by two. We get five, then we're going to add two to get the height of the joist. Five plus two is seven for a two by eight joist. Now let's go ahead and check it with the span chart from the 2021 Residential Building Code book, where the lumber spans here for 16 inch on center lumber. For two by eight Douglas fir will be 12 foot nine inches. And for Southern Pine number two, it will be 11 foot 10 inches. And for two by six Douglas fir number two grade, these are all number two graded lumbers which is more of a construction standard lumber in most areas. And I would also like to point out that these lumber spans do change. You could probably use 10 foot two by six if it was number one or select. However, you would need to check with the span charts to verify those lengths. And for Southern Pine, number two, two by six, nine foot four inches is the maximum span, suggesting that this method right here actually works. However, to prove that, let's go ahead and take a look at a few more span lengths. However, I'm not going to walk you through the entire process. I'm just going to pop up a few numbers. You can take a look at them, pause the video at any time to figure out if this method actually works. Now, in this example here, we can actually use two by six, but we're not going to get in trouble if we use a two by eight. So this is kind of where I was going with this, suggesting that it might not provide you with the best money saving advice. However, will provide you with a strong floor. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at an eight foot span. And in this example here, I would like to point out that we're looking at the number six. We're not using the actual size of the lumber, like 5.5 on a two by six. We're using the nominal size or the number that you're going to use when purchasing the lumber, like a two by six or a two by eight. We're going to be using the number six for two by six, eight for two by eight, and so on. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at an 11 foot span where we end up with 7.5 providing us with a two by eight joist. And we can see where this works out just fine with our lumber chart spans. Next up, let's take a look at a 12 foot span where we won't have a problem using Douglas fir, but we might have a problem using Southern pine. And of course, this example provides us with our first failure using this method, even though it isn't off by much. And in our last example, let's take a 12 foot nine inch board. We're also going to be using this number because it represents the longest length we can use for number two, Douglas fir, along with an example for a number that will need to be rounded to the nearest whole number which in this case will be 13 and see what we end up with. And as you can see here, we have an 8.5 suggesting that we need to use two by 10 instead of two by eight, even though the lumber chart suggests otherwise. So in my opinion, I think this general rule of thumb is close enough. It might not be used by a structural engineer. However, I think in most of the examples we saw that it got close enough or provided us with a larger lumber size that was going to create a stronger floor.